Warning, graphic pest control video ahead. Do not watch if you might be offended. If, however, you really like watching pest control videos, then hello again and welcome to the Squirrel Hunter channel. Please continue and watch us as we control pest populations with silenced air rifles here in the UK. If you have any questions, can you please check the description below first to see if it's already been answered and for some useful links. Thank you. As you may notice by the title, this is part three of the Squirrel Hill series. Myself and Bro are on the trigger today. We've got here at first light, and you can see the sun's just poking over the horizon as we go up the track. A lot of mist in the valley below. Looks like it could be a nice warm day today. We're hoping for some action on these feeders. Bro's first up, and he'll be using his Air Arms S510 and 177 and launching Barracuda Hunter Extremes at the squirrels. He's in his hide. Because this is quite away from home, when we can, we normally bring two rifles and extra provisions just in case we have a problem. He starts out today with his Daystate Harrier X in 2 2 launching Webby Power Pals. His first opportunity comes with this J, that's why it's got scope cam on. You just got to line up on it. Good body shot there, and the J's done. He'd been seeing lots of mice around the wood pile, then he spotted this. On the left there, a weasel sticks his head out. This little hunter is looking for the mice, we reckon. Only saw it for a short period of time. And disappeared off. Smaller than the stoat. I have heard it said in the past that a weasel is weaselly identifiable and the stoat is totally different. They are indeed excellent hunters. They are also on the controllable species list. It disappeared too quickly anyway. Same as that squirrel. Bro's already had the malfunction with his rifle. He's taking some test shots out of boredom. The pellet started to wander. He couldn't quite work out what it was, so he's swapped the Air Arms S510. And consequently, there's no scope cam now, unfortunately. Just have to bear with this. The raw footage for this video is over an hour long. Mainly down to the fact a lot of the squirrels end up approaching quite slowly. So I've sped it up, and I will continue to speed them up throughout the video. Save you a bit of time. Number one on the deck. Looks like a good shot. Well placed 177 pellet doing the business. There's another one come into view somewhere. Let's put the camera back on again. Just chopped a chunk out of this video because it's hanging around just off camera to the right. Should be coming on any second now. There we go. Bro just turned the camera on and waited for it to come into view. As per usual, I inspect the ones on the ground. Looks like it's found a bit of spilt grain to have a munch on. Bro's messing around with his camera. I do think he was contemplating taking a shot at it down there. That shadow behind. The pheasant coming into view. This is a pheasant shoot area. That's why they want to get rid of the squirrels. The pheasant didn't even twitch. No idea what went on then. The squirrel did though. Typical thrash about. Bro's doing alright so far. There's another, another squirrel coming in from the left hand side. Straight up that stick we put. As I said it before, I'll say it again. We often put the sticks here as a route up onto the feeder, which avoids going over the top of the corpses. I do also believe that it creates a little scent run directing the squirrels to where they should be able to get shot. I do believe this is the same squirrel that wandered off the side of the screen last time. Wandered off to the big loop the loop, then came running back in again. 
My brother turned his camera off. Now it's back on again. As I said in previous videos, this will be a series detailing our attempts to whittle the squirrel numbers down in this woodland. We told the owners it should be good for a hundred squirrels between the four of us. Grant, Brev, Bro and myself all got feeders in the woodland. We haven't had the advantage of having feeders up right at the end of the last pheasant season. This one looks like it could be in trouble. It would have been if Bro hadn't pulled the shot. Completely missed that one. Now it's decided it's going to wander off. Not quite sure what happened there. But the scope can to look back on or work out. My betting is either a squirrel head movement or Bro might have pulled the shot a little bit. Plenty of pheasants on this permission. They all come in for free feed. Like everywhere else we shoot. No way we're shooting any of these. As so often happens, while we're busy looking at something else, a squirrel comes into view. I often like to watch the interactions between these two animals. Is it going to go to the feeder though? Is it only our second visit to this location? Do you remember last time? only got the one bro showed me the way to go since then I've moved my feet are a bit closer no joy that one's disappeared off I'll see back again that's more like it Nice feeding pattern. Bro's been a bit cautious now after the last miss. Didn't fail that time though. Good solid impact. Turn the camera off and on again then, by accident. It's hard when it looks this filming malarkey. This location seems to be quite a profitable one. As I said earlier on, I'll speed up the bits where they mess about. Just to save you the grief of watching. I could have cut them out I suppose. But then it's no real education of anybody who wants to do the same thing just how you can be messed about by a squirrel they'll take their sweet time and you've got nothing to do but sit and wait with an air rifle not like you've got a shotgun or nothing then again you probably have one shot and have to wait maybe two hours for another shot probably at a guess you just need them to sit up nice like that and a well placed shot Doesn't look like a good shot, does it? Looks like it's raising its head. It's easy to see looking on the big screen. I'm trying to film from the hide. You're looking at a tiny little screen on that camera. I'm not sure if he shot that a second time or not. It's definitely dead now. Again, I've had to speed it up, try and rush Mr. Squirrel to his doom. Definitely a patient man's game. If you're not patient, probably not the one for you. And a good headshot. Now 
not moving its head this time, is it? Its back leg's kicking. Lots of blood coming at the nose. Nicely done, bro. It's not a bad effort. See what the sun's got quite nice. Now these jays, we've been told to take these out in this area. They're a recognised pest species in the UK. And they're going to be given to a taxidermist by the owner of the land. So they won't be going to waste. Not a bad effort from Bro there. Just checking out the kills. That one that looked like it needed a second shot. I don't think he did shoot it a second time because it was laying in the exact position it fell in. It's not a bad haul, 5 and a J. There's 510 for Bro. I'm out with my Rapid in 2-2 calibre. I'm shooting Predator Polymags. I start my session just after the sun rises, as you can see here behind me. I've moved a bit closer to Bro, but there's my pilot kit I've dumped out of my car. And there's the feeder, the tree, so that's the distance I'm shooting. My car just parked over to the right out the way. That's my hide view, popped up just beside the track. I'm on and filming now. And I've been up and checked it and the level's dropped. They have found it. If you remember last time I climbed the bank in the wet dirt and slipped and bust the side ledge off. I just put a bit of wood there for them to sit on and hopefully they'll stand on that, pick out a few grains and get shot. That's the plan anyway. I'm not sure how it's going to pan out for me here. I know they visited it so I'm expecting at least one or two. Ubiquitous pheasants. Loads of bird song in the background. The sun's just starting to streak across the feeder. Not up any spilt grains. Quite messy eaters these squirrels. Off he stalks, off around the back of the tree. And what myself and Bro tend to do is in a new permission. We we'll shoot it for a while at first light. It's hard going in the summer, or the lighter mornings, because you have to get up so early. And after a while, you soon get an idea of what time the squirrels tend to turn up. We're still in that testing stage at the moment, so we've got a first light. But I've had to have a fair old hang around for my first squirrels to turn up. I'm just sat here filming, listening to all the sounds of the forest. It's quite relaxing, really. I normally take the birds singing and dawn chorus activity to be a wake-up call for squirrels. I normally like to think to myself that the squirrels are going to turn up once the birds become active. That's not always the case. Sometimes you just got to wait for them to turn up. They could be bed down quite a way away or having a lazy day. I'm not sure. Again, patience is a virtue. I recorded quite a lot of bird song this morning. I'll play a bit for you before we get into nitty gritty. It's got to get across to you that it doesn't always come easily. Sometimes you have to wait. If you've got to wait, you might as well sit there and enjoy the surroundings for what they are. I'm going to turn the camera on because there's a squirrel coming directly down the bank behind that tree. I'm going to speed it up now. Right, if you just look to the left hand side of the tree, see him popping round. Can you imagine what he was doing on the way down? Imagine it foraged its way across the floor, sniffing and looking. Let's try to get the camera set up. There he is, sticking his head out by that strap we're using to hold the feeders to the tree. We're not going to lay the screw to the trees in this area, so it's straps and wooden supports only. Anything that doesn't involve sticking a hole in the tree. And there's a gap behind the back of there. I didn't realise it would be a problem at the time. Rather annoying. Don't like them getting behind the feeder like that. It's also a place where a body can kick into. Needless to say, my first squirrel of the day wants to mess about. 
it's a bit of a pain, so I sped it up. Put a lot of this type of activity. Get on the roof, doing all sorts of strange things. It's finally come to rest. It sat on my little logs I put there. It's turned its back on me. That's not normally a good thing. It's normally you sit hunched forward and you can't see the head. I can see the back of its head. I'm looking at it through the scope. Decide to stick a pellet in it. Those type of shots are very effective as you can see. As long as you can see the head properly. The tendency for a hunched up squirrel feet none of its paws to lean forward. You can't quite see the head properly but that was sat up quite nice. Another advantage of this bank is when they kick the roll down away from the feeder. Hopefully taking the pressure off any other squirrels coming down to feed. So another advantage of shooting up a little bank like this. On the flat, like bro's feeder, they drop at the base. Zoom in on it, but I'm pretty sure it's done for. Any movement will be just nerves. Happy with that shot, not bad for a first effort on this new feeder location. Mr. Pheasant's come back for a look. Such a nosy animal. It's only occurred to me since watching this footage, these pheasants visit when I've seen the squirrel in the area. So it wasn't long after this one turned up, I sped it up a bit. I think they realise that they're messy eaters and they drop stuff. I might be wrong. Periodic visits seems to be the order of the day. Unless they don't associate it with squirrels and just associate it with a matter of time going by. It's worth checking every so often in case there's some grain on the ground. I don't know. The reason the camera's on again is as the squirrels come down the bank behind that tree again. If you look at the bottom right hand side of that tree, the head will pop into view. I've seen it up the bank. So I had plenty of time to get the camera on. Getting my rifle in position. This is going to be another one that messes about. Just speed this bit up just to show you. It sits to the right of that little stump. It looks like it could be a shot on, then it eventually moves in. Finally he decides he's going to go and have a bite to eat another feeder. That's exactly what I want. I'm sat there looking fairly forward at me. I'm fidgeting around in my hide. That'll do nicely. Good solid impact there. The whole point of the feeders is to get them to sit nice and still. As I said before, and I'll say it again, I find it much easier to pick out where the brain is than where the heart and lungs are when they're sat up like that. If you can't hit a target that big at that range, you shouldn't be doing it. And that's the results you get. Perfectly clean kill. No running off. It's dropping into the ground dead. Quick zoom in. Easy to see on the big screen. You see the muscle spasm in the diaphragm. That's the toast that squirrel is. I'm trying to squint at the camera now with my glasses to see if I can see any movement. This one caught me unawares. Might have been on Facebook, you never know. That's a terrible thing with modern technology. You end up chatting to people when the boredom strikes. Especially when you a good 4G connection. Telling everyone on the forums, hey, what are you doing? I'm guessing this one came down behind the tree. So it looks like it's going to mess about as well. Oh. This 
squirrel goes up to the top of the feeder for the last time. Does the squirrel slide? And solid headshot, side on. Probably might have found the mark. He's tracking it the whole time. Quite frustrating to sit and watch him mess about so much. The end result was the same as the others. If it's a good shot. Squirrel kicking in the bank. Just as dead as any other squirrel. It's all over. Very happy with the performance of the Polymount shorts. With this range and this type of hunting, they work very well indeed. Taking to zoom in and on on a bit, just double check in. Difficult to see from the hide, and so easy to see on the big screen. The camera misses nothing. Lost count of the times I've seen things out of it without watching the video footage. That'll do, another one down. You can tell by the fact that the camera's been turned back on, there's another one coming up to the right hand corner of the screen. You can see up under the trees there, see the approach across the floor. See it a bit better now. It slips into view. If you sit and watch your feet long enough, you'll see certain routes tend to be the ones they take the most. That'll do. So it's making a beeline for the feeder. It's going to come around the corner of that tree and there'll be a sea of dead bodies. What's it going to make of that? Zoom in, have a closer look, should be. Not very certain of it. Definitely wants the food. I was going to speed this bit up, we'll just show you what happens next. Now one just lay down on the floor. Let's grab the attention of this squirrel. He gently comes in. We've seen them before now go up and absolutely rag the ones on the floor. Full on, sink the ashes in and shake it like a rat. Like a terrier shakes a rat, even. Not sure what's going on there. Some sort of squirrel deviance. I do wonder whether there's some sort of familial connection between these two. Interesting behaviour, though. No point trying to take a shot at it. It's bobbing around too much. When I shoot it, I want it to be dead. It was quite hoped that they're going to jump on the feeder next. Then get other things happen. I'm going to have to make this moment. There's another squirrel approaching from the right. it and zoom back out. I think there's another one further at the bank as well moving around. See a shadow there. Not sure if it was. Had to happen eventually. Convergence of squirrels. Let it settle out. Dominance. To take hold. We'll have a rush around together now. Bit of tail flicking. I obviously want to shoot both of them if possible. If that indeed was a third squirrel, can't quite see properly on this small screen. There's definitely two there. I was going to fast forward large portions of this clip, but decided to let you watch in real time. And that squirrel goes off to the right. This is what happens, it looks quite calm at the moment. There'll be one coming from the left in a minute. 
Maybe that one ran around the back of the tree and forced it round, I don't know. There's definitely two there. And there's one coming in the tree to the left. There's definitely one from the branches to the top right hand corner coming down. So there's three in the field of play at the moment. And there's a fourth one coming from the left. That's all I need. Didn't notice the one at the top when I was there. I only thought there was three in play at this point. One of them's got to be dominant enough to sit on that feeder. You can see one on the tree in the top right hand corner. The other one's still on the left. They're all a bit jockeying for position, but I'm only concentrating on the one near the feeder. Swirl in the hand and all that. So we have two in the trees. Let's see. Rifle bottle on the sticks. And that's a squirrel getting shot in the head. Let's see what the reaction the other two have got. Hopefully the kicking squirrel will cause their attention to be peaked. Or their interest even. The attention to be got. I don't think they'll be away for too long. As it was, the ones twitching on the ground and they're all having a run around in the background. So we ended up speeding it up. It's all the same clip of film. You see them going down the trees. We're all paying right now. I'm just going to wait for that one to come in. It's quite tedious, I know. It's even more tedious when they sat waiting for them to stand still. Which is one at the front looks like it might be about to do. That's more like it. Line it up on it ready for the shot. Hit it straight in the side of the head. And it doesn't look good, does it? That type of reaction is a poor shot. As good as the pellets are, you still have to place them correctly. So I'm lining up on it for a second shot. It does the business. You can see it. Another squirrel disappear off at the top of the screen there. There it is twitching. It's more important that I got the shot off than get the camera on it. It wasn't going to go far, but it wasn't a clean kill. It was unfortunate, but I remedied the situation pretty quickly. Definitely dead now. And that's what I like about the headshots. If they're not quite perfect, they don't tend to go far. If you haven't done the business with the body shop correctly, you can run off quite ways. You have to go out and chase them. If I could just sit there and take a second shot. Got two out of the four. And seeing four wandering around like that makes me think this place is absolutely heaving with the things. Never been shot for the squirrels properly. We're hoping to make some inroads into the numbers. We keep getting days like this into the double figures, we'll soon make that 100 up or promised or aimed to get. Seem like a sensible figure based on other places we go. I'll leave this one in real time, this one doesn't mess about too much. Obviously dead squirrels on the ground. It's going to cause a bit of consternation. I do think their focus of the live one coming around the corner is pretty much transfixed by the corpses. Just a pet theory of mine. Maybe you can get away once they've seen them. Maybe you can get away with moving a little bit more easily without being spotted. That I'll do if it sits on that bit of stick. I'm lining it up for the shot. Good solid impact. Polymax found its mark. Deposited ably by my lovely Gaben Rapid. Bit of a 
thrash around. Quite happy with that though. Getting quite a stack of squirrels today. Looks like the move was good. It's a lot better when you get a bag full rather than just the one. Maybe if the other feeder was put up a lot earlier and left to ferment. Give the animals plenty of chance to find it. Make a beeline for it. Maybe that have a different effect. This area seems to have produced quite quickly. That'll do. Here comes another squirrel. What's it going to do when it sees these are the ones on the floor? Put the camera on where I think it's going to be, so I can then get the rifle up and prepare myself for a shot. So I'm going to look at the bodies. No, it doesn't like it at all. So decided it's going back up the bank. Well, that's not the sort of reaction we want. Anytime we see that type of behaviour, or if I have to go out to finish one off, I'll exit the hide. I'll exit the hide, do what needs to be done, and then I'll pick up all the corpses and bring them back into the hide. If you've got a break cover, you might as well clear up. And here there's squirrels up in the trees, calling to each other. Sounds like there's plenty more around. The later the day now. Getting quite a good bag. Quite happy to sit out for a bit longer. Maybe there's another squirrels come racing in. Caught me in the wares again. No squirrels on the deck. Probably smells of squirrels, but then again, if it was normal and no one was shooting, the squirrels would come and feed and leave again, they'd leave their scent behind. They don't seem to care about the smell of blood, doesn't seem to affect them one little bit. They can definitely smell the other squirrels. They have a good sniff about. That's just normal. The fact so many have turned up so far today means it doesn't affect them. They must smell it on a regular basis. See who's been there and who hasn't. There's another one that wants to mess about. Probably smelling all the dead bodies that went down the bank. and a good sniff about. And then this happens. Listen. There's a group of four lads, about 17, 18 years old, walking down the pathway. I did have a little dialogue with them, explain the situation. They're happy to move on quickly half an hour past. I'm guessing this might be the same squirrel. No way of telling. Once the disturbance is gone, we've got a squirrel coming in. Finally it turns up on the feeder, unbeknownst to me, I've knocked my bolt slightly open on my gun. I haven't hit that squirrel at all, I've completely missed it. I'm not sure what I've shot. I haven't shot the squirrel. I have now though. The pellets come out and hit something else. That was because the bolt was open, a fraction. Quick reload. Second shot, hit the target perfectly. Bit of a worry there. Did wonder what happened at first. Because of our long bolt handle, sometimes it's easy to rest it and knock it open a fraction. At least that's what I think happened. 
The squirrel just panicked and went and sat on the side of the tree just to the camera shot. But that'll do. There's a squirrel on its way. In fact, it's already here. There's a dead body on the ground again now. We'll go through the inspection protocol. While you lay there, never mind. The body's rumbling. Now you can see it's sat on that stick and I'm lining up to take a shot. And I realise we never cocked the rifle from last go. So now that I cocked the rifle ever so carefully. Very slowly. I'm going to line up to take a shot now for real. It's better. And these little traumas that happen during shooting. People wandered into view, bolts being opened, failing to cock the rifle. Bro had his gun trauma. Oh, it flips over to the side a bit. Quite happy with that shot. Zoom in, squint at the screen on the camcorder, doesn't appear to be moving. Setup seems to do the job again, apart from that one which is probably my fault. My attitude for it's always your fault, you set the rifle up, you shoot the rifle. If the rifle doesn't perform or you don't perform, it's always going to be your fault. See the squirrel at the top there. Moving across, I thought it was going to come to the feeder. Doesn't, just runs through. Disappears off up there. In the future, it means you see a lot of them come from that direction. Seems to be a common pathway, so maybe it's going back home, maybe it's been feeding somewhere else. Not sure, but I've never even come anywhere near the feeder, unfortunately. The squirrel just bounded down. Just about got the camera on in time. Typically, it's gone in the back of the tree and they come back out again. The body's on the floor. You can hear some voices. You can hear the farmer down the end, several hundred yards away, but you can hear the voice echoing over. I'm pretty sure that's where it's coming from. It doesn't seem to affect them. A bunch of lads walking in the pathway did though, as soon as it was spotted, it ran away. And yes, we have another messer. Not to worry though. We're patient, aren't we? Just let you watch this one faff about. I'll start talking again when it finishes. For most of that, I was tracking it with the rifle. Could have just sat in the camera shot. I'm lining up on it now, thinking about taking the shot. Stood there far too long. It's hard to tell sometimes. I made a judgment call. Knock my squirrel down. Be an exit wound there. I said it before. Squirrel skulls are pretty thin. Thinner than an eggshell. Just like shooting an egg, in my opinion, with a bit of 
grey fur on the outside. That's how I imagine them to be. They're tough animals, don't get me wrong, but their skulls are pretty weak. It's a 12 foot pound pellet, even the 2 2 will often go straight through it. Just odd muscle spasms, and that'll do. And if you've been diligently counting, that's nine squirrels I've shot so far. Just need one more for a double figure bag, and that will make my day if I can manage that. This looks like a likely candidate coming down this log. Very often travel on logs on the floor. Seen it so many times before. That's it, Sam. Oh, you can be number 10. Yes, this is another messer again. So I've had to speed it up. Like I said before, the amount of footage I got from this day out was over whatever an hour. We'll reduce it down for you. You won't have to go through the pain I have to waiting for these things to sit still. This is more like it. Squirrel 10 sat nice and still. You just about to see the pellets streaking and dropping into that little depression. I think Bro packed up about an hour ago. He texted me. When I told him I have nine, he said, We'll have to stay until you get ten. So that was much of a relief as anything. First double figure bag for me on this permission. Kicked itself into the bushes. It's pretty much all over for that one. Quite happy with 10. Trying to zoom in on it. Absolutely no joy there. I'm going to get out anyway and inspect it right now because I'm going to pack up in a second. Just managed to see part of the body. I'm out and you can see the sun's well over the yard arm. I'm going to check on the remaining squirrels. You can see my hide. Shooting up to here. I've already got these in a little poke just to make sure there's no way in this area I can touch that squirrel without poking it first with a stick or the barrel of a rifle. You'd have to be mentally subnormal to do that. See the chompers they got. Like I said, I've poked them all first. I don't think for a second I just jumped out the hide and went up and started manhandling squirrels. And the most I've ever come across on these things is the odd flea. Well, quite a few things actually. But they get frozen anyway before the skates of them. I've never come across a tick or other diseases, bot flies or anything. I don't think they exist in this country yet. Maybe global warming might change that. Who knows? There's that gap in the back of the feeder. We'll have to do something about that. It was hastily put there. Phase two of the day out is to fix my feeder from the hastily parked one I did last time. I've screwed that broken piece of shelf onto the bottom to make a new shelf and I've managed to find some breeze blocks right in the back and propped that up in the air so now it's pulled tight to the tree and there's no gap behind it. So I'm happy with that day out. I managed to fix my feeder, get it in a good position. I had some wheat with me. So I bang that in the top. It's all full and set up. There's a lovely rapid with the 10 on the ground. A couple of different angles. Quite pleased with that. I'll go and pick Bro up. Decided to do a layout of all our squirrels. Not bad at all. 15 in a J. They're in the back of the car. Now I'll be putting a bag and put in my freezer when I get home. Needless to say, needs doing. 26 degrees. It's turned out to be a lovely day. And I hope you're all enjoying the Squirrel Hill series so far. There's a few more to come before the end of the year. Hopefully, we'll have either a big one or a double episode around December time when we don't normally make videos just for your enjoyment. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, please like, subscribe and share. Thank you.